Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, part number 9, time to continue what we left uh, yesterday. So in this one we're gonna uh, work on the logging stuff. So we did, uh, we were able to register our user yesterday, but now it uh, will be nice to be able also to log. And also we're gonna just start to make use of the current user from the context and you're gonna see how pretty simple this is. is. So uh, first step, like we start in almost each video, we're gonna start in the schema GraphQL file. Right below the input register, in, uh, register input, we're gonna create that logging input. Inside this one, what we want is this email and password. So we we ask the user to uh, to log with email and password, and this is required. And I'm gonna copy this uh, line, and I'm gonna say logging input. So that's gonna be the same thing. We want to return the same out response to the user. If you remember, out response gave us an out token and a user, and the out token have the access token inside that, and we can after that pass that to our headers. So now like we almost always do, go to your re resolver or if you use uh, VS or something like that, this is the command you need to run. So now that mean then our mutation resolver is now anymore an implementation of the mutation resolver because now mutation resolver have this logging uh, fun uh, method and mutation resolver don't have it. So I'm going to just implement the mission missing uh, method and now this is where we are. So we have the login where we get the context and the input have uh, the email and password, those we did require. So here, first thing we get is we're gonna check if we get a user from our user repo, get user by email by using the input, the email. So if here we have an error, we're gonna return an error and we're gonna say email password combination doesn't work. Uh, the don't work okay after that so so that means i don't have a user with this uh, in, uh with this email finally and why i say that it's because i don't want to say hey you have a problem with your password or hey you have a problem with your email i just want to always say that so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna use that as a as a variable and i'm gonna say error bad credential and that's going to be equal to that so now i can reuse this error like i want after that here i'm going to maybe receive an error from the user and i'm going to call a function i'm going to create with you called compare password so this compare password method we're going to create that it's going to be to the point of user going to receive a string password and can return an error uh, here, finally, it's as you remember, we uh, ask the password, but we need to check if the password the user gave us from the GraphQL, uh, GraphQL uh, call, finally, request, is the real password which it's now saved as a hash version inside the database. So I'm going to get the byte password by doing slice of byte from the password. After that, I'm going to call byte hash shed password who's going to be equal to the byte again of my u that password okay and after that here the only thing i need to do it's called bcrypt and call the compare hash and password where finally i just pass the byte hash password plus the byte password this thing gonna give us already an error. So if compare compare bcrypt hash password with it possible plain text equivalent return nil on success or an error on failure. So this is what we want. We want to receive an error if this is not good and uh, nothing if it's good finally. So now here what we're gonna do it's we need to check again for the error. If we have an error we're gonna send back the bad credential. After that here we want to do like we did yesterday. Now we have the user. So the user right now is authenticate. We want to gen a token. Again, here we can receive an error. Here I'm gonna say return nil and I'm gonna say again my awesome error. Like that. After that here I, I finally gonna return a pointer to uh, out response where I pass the token and here I pass the user and after that I return nil. 
because this is what we are supposed to be doing. Now here, just because why not doing this in same time, I want to be able to create a meter here, only if the user is logged, and also I want to put the user ID here because right now is always going to be one and this is not good. So what we can do now, it's if you remember, we did create something in one of the past video from the middleware, get current user from the context. If you remember this one, this function finally was checking if uh, your current user um, key, current user key was in the context finally. And if it's null, we return no user in context as an error. After that, we uh, finally cast this one to a model user pointer. And if we have, uh, if it's not okay, so we are not able to cast it, or the user ID is equal to an empty string because remember, um, this is the default value of an ID. Now, uh, yeah, we return again an error, else we return the user. So here now what that meant, it's if we have an error, that means the user right now is unity, unity, you know, you know, Ten T K ten. Okay, so I'm gonna create this error like we did at the top here, and this call here I'm gonna say you know that's okay. something like that. You can change the message, but it's like you, you want. So that man finally, when I create a meter, if you are not logged, you receive this error, so nothing can happen. After that, here finally, we're gonna replace that with the user we. You receive from here so now the way we can test that it's first I'm gonna jump to my terminal the thing I want you to do is don't forget to source to env after that what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna redrop the database and up you don't need to do this the reason I do this is because I've done so many tests before doing this video so I want to make sure that I start like you I'm gonna restart my server and I'm gonna jump back to Firefox. I'm gonna refresh to make sure that I receive the new schema stuff. And I'm gonna create my first mutation called register user. So I need first thing to register for a new user. So his email is gonna be John Snow. First name is gonna be John. Last name is gonna be Snow. His password is gonna be password. Confirm password is gonna be password. And his username is going to be John Snow. Yes, again, we don't have validation. It's going to be the next video. So here we want to receive the access token and the user ID. Perfect. So now we have a user created inside our database. We can make sure uh, we can check if you want. So right there. Now we're going to have user one with everything we did ask and the password is Ash. That's perfect. Now, we're gonna try to log. So logging user. So we're gonna use the same thing we just did. So email is gonna be johnsnow.gmail.com and password. We're gonna pass a bad password for now, okay? So password one, two, three. And I'm gonna ask again for the access token and just the user ID. If I run that, email password combination don't work. Perfect, so that means the password wasn't working. If I do this, now I receive an access token. That's perfect, this is what we want. If this is a bad email, again, the same error. So now we get what we need. But now we have this access token and why it's really important, it's I'm gonna copy this access token. So make sure you copy that or you can redo this, but. And now I'm gonna try to create a meetup without that, okay? So create meetup, it's pretty simple. We just need a name, so at meetup, and also a description, at description. And now here I'm gonna set on the ID, the name, and the description of this meetup. I'm gonna run pretty far just because it's gonna be simpler for you. Now if I click run, boom, you're not okay. I get this error because right now I have no others, nothing with no authorization. So the user is not logged at all. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to create an object right there. I'm going to put authorization here and I'm going to prefix my token I did copy to uh, this one. 
And now I'm going to create a meetup. And now it's not working. So what is happening right now is this is a mistake I've done. If you go to your server, if you remember in uh, two video, we did create the R router. That's perfect. But the thing is, we don't even use our router. So what I mean by that is right now we need to change each time we see HTTP with that. And here, when we do HTTP listen and serve, we can pass it at handler. So now we're going to pass handler. So what happened finally, it's the router is the one who received the alt middleware, but we don't even use this router. So what that meant, it's we don't even use those middleware everything. That's why you don't have the, those log. So now you're going to see, I'm going to restart the server and now I'm going to create a meetup. Boom. Now it worked. And now look at that. I receive some, um, I receive like my request ID and my logger. So now we see we respond that in 16 milliseconds. So finally, this is what we've done. We did select the user from the database. And after that, we did insert inside the meetup with the user ID one who is the current user. So you see, um, uh, that was finally uh, good. So just to make sure that it works and a real user can create is, um, Meetup. I'm gonna say Bob as the Gmail. Bob Jones password. And now here I'm gonna say Bob. I'm gonna register user. I'm gonna use this access token. And now I'm gonna create a meetup for Bob. Create a meetup. Perfect. A meetup for Bob. So now what I can do is I can jump to my database, open my meetup, and now look here. I have two meetup. I have the last one who is a uh, user is the number two. And if I check is really the Bob one. And if I'm looking back to the other one right there, if I do command D, this is the way I can do a choose target like that. Now I can see is Jon Snow. So yeah, so this is us for this video. Again, the report is going to be in the description. Uh, it's a pretty simple login. I really think uh, we should kind of uh, save those user inside like read uh, re something like that. Just because you see, every time we do a request, we always hit the database first. So uh, you can surely put your user inside read and make it much more quicker. But again, you get other issue with that. So uh, yeah, so I hope you enjoy and we're going to talk in the next video. Bye everyone.